Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, this is going to be uh, x86 assembly, um, how to write your first program to say hello world. So uh, basically what we want to do is we want to supply a message and print it out to the terminal screen or standard, standard out. So uh, let's just do that. I'm going to delete all of this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some good documentation to say this is tut.asm uh, author code asm and we're going to say the date which is 11 25 1.3 Okay, so now what we're going to do is to find some sections. There's really two main sections of an x86 assembly uh, file. There's .text and there's .data or data, whatever. The data contains our variables and stuff that we want to use in our program and the text contains uh, the instructions that we want to execute. So what we're going to do is first understand what we need to to have in mind when, when so our goal is to write something so we need to know the uh, we need to know uh, what the write syscall so we can actually go and look at uh, unistd32.h which is a C header file we have a bunch of diff different syscalls here that are defined as uh, in, uh, ints, and so write is actually four, so that's what we need to know. So what we're gonna do is we're going, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do move eax 0x4. Okay, so what does this actually mean? If you've never seen assembly before, this can look confusing, but basically what we're saying is that we are moving the number four into the register EAX, which is on the CPU, one of the registers in the CPU. We're saying this basically tells the CPU, hey, we're going to be writing something. Um, so we're, tell CPU, we're going to write. The next thing is we're going to move into EBX1. What does this mean? Uh, tell CPU to use standard out as the file descriptor. So what we're saying is that we're using the standard out, uh, which is going to be our terminal screen. Um, as the file descriptor. The file descriptor is where we're gonna, the you know, the thing of where we're gonna write to. So we define it as one. So we tell the CPU that. Next thing we do is we actually need to define our message in dot data. So down here, create we create a variable with the name and then a colon, db for drive bytes or something like that, something bytes. Uh, we can have a string that says hello world. And we close it with the double quotations. Um, I believe we, you have to use double quotations. I don't think single quotations will work. Um, and now at with a comma, we can put 0xa. So what is 0xa? 0xa is actually the, uh, it's, well, first of all, it's hexadecimal for 10. Um, but it is also defined as a new line character. So basically this says, uh, comma means at the end of the string, put a new line character. So uh, on the terminal screen, that would look like the string hello world and then an empty space below it and then uh, program exits. Okay, so we also need to define the message length. What we could do 
is we could just manually hard code this length in. So this would be uh, 13, in including the new line character, so 13. We could just put 13. But something uh, a little more snazzy is we can do message length is going to equal uh, dollar sign dash message. So what this does is we're saying that uh, we're literally just saying message length is equal to the length, which is denoted by these two uh, things, uh, message. So whenever we change the message, this will automatically update. Okay. So now we're going to move into ECX our message. Give register our string for the buffer. So uh, we are putting into the uh, the uh, buffer for the right syscall uh, message, which is our hello world. Great. So next, we now we need to supply the message length. So we're going to move into EDX uh, message length supply length um, okay so that is the bulk of our program now what we need to do is we need to invoke uh, the syscall that we have set up and in Intel syntax let me yeah another thing to note is that this is Intel syntax there's AT&T syntax but I just I, do, I find uh, Intel syntax to be just easier to use. So, um, yeah, all right. So we have int 0x80. Uh, this basically tells the program to invoke write syscall. Um, not specifically the write syscall, but just syscalls in general that will invoke everything that we've set up. Great. So now that we've executed, we need to gracefully exit. So we can do that by um, resetting EAX. We're just gonna move one into the EAX register. Then we also need an exit code. Um, so we can move into EBX zero. You can put anything you want here. You can put 45, 21, one zero uh, just good practice that means that the program is executed successfully and like we just learned invoke what we just set up with 0x80 let's just make a note here gracefully exit okay great um, now we need to tell the program where to begin executing our code. So we do that with global underscore start. And down here, we want to denote this section as the starting point. So the program will read this and say global underscore start. It'll find start and start executing our instructions. And it'll grab our message from the data section. And I believe that this is it. Uh, we can now start compiling. And so, yeah, let me, whoops. Let me save and exit. We're gonna use NASM. And so uh, if you don't have NASM, just do apt-get install NASM. We're going to denote the file type as an elf 32 bit file, the output as tut.o, our object file, and then tut.asm as our source file. Execute that. And then we're going to use LD to actually compile it into an elf 32 bit executable. So we can use LD-M. If you don't have LD, just do apt-get install uh, LD, and we use dash M. 
to say, hey, this is a elf underscore i386. Basically, that means 32-bit elf file. Our output file is going to be tut.elf, and our object file is tut.o. Execute that, and now we should have a tut.elf in the directory. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute tut.elf. And there we go. It prints out hello world with a new line and it exits gracefully. So it does exactly what we intended it to do. Now remember we actually set the we set the exit code to zero. So just for fun let's actually look at the exit code of our program that we just executed and it's zero. So yeah, this is um, x86 assembly. Uh, I'm still learning myself. Uh, hopefully this was fun, entertaining, whatever, you know, informative. And uh, that's it. See you guys later.